Welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here with co-host Chip. 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 Oh, say it for once. Chip, I'm here, man. What's You're up? here? Present. You're here? <laughs> Present. Man, check it out. I know you found a pretty cool Beatles NFT, so we're going to talk about that and nothing else today. The whole show. Yeah. Don't say that, show. Jeff. I'll freak people out. <laughs> Some good videos, so, too. Check. All right. So SEC, Gary Gensler said what? Is he misspeaking? Is he not telling the truth? What is going on? And crypto is a major risk to the market. So says the IMF and Bitcoin and altcoins, crypto, however you want to refer to it, is now considered cash, cash money. You don't say. It's, I do say. <laughs> you don't say. And the president of El Salvador is doubling down on Bitcoin, regardless Love of what it. the IMF says. Man, we're going to talk about all that and more. Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. SEC, SEC. SEC, the SEC. Can we just don't do one show a week that we don't mention the SEC? M -I -T. Just one. Just one just show. Just one. It won't be today. Well, it could it be, be today. today but oh, it could be. We've already mentioned it. <laughs> It's already over. It's already in the thumbnail. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Sorry. Let's go right into the Beatles. Now, let's go. Man, there was a funny video that uh, Hans Loaded had shared with us, um, and it was actually Tipsy Tiger. And I think this is kind of a fun place to start. Yeah. I, kinda, I got this pulled up. It's pretty cool. It's exciting. Stimulating. Why not just get it out of the way immediately? Because let's do it's it. so cool. There you go. Pressed up. Looking at the TV screen, you know, it's kind of like one of those <laughs> pressed up. It's right before he gets hit in the face. <laughs> what in the world? You look at bat. this and you're like, <laughs> what would prompt you as you're talking to even do that? You know, I mean, I guess you got a whole bunch of hand gestures, but <laughs> I don't know. It's a lot easier about getting hammered and right, in the, right in the face. And that was the video. No, okay. So. So this is kind of interesting. We're going to dissect this one a little bit because some of the things that he says might not be 100% what you would want to refer <laughs> to as the truth. So let's let's uh let's let's hit this play button. Here we go. You so that you can give us some guidance on how you think we might most fruitfully use our time to try to address the Oops. likely to be um, uh, bad behavior. Ouch. Uh, I thank you in two minutes and 20 seconds. All right, Jeff, let me download this video and boost it. And it's so hard to hear. Let me boost it. Let me boost it. I, I'll, give if me a you second. can. Yeah, let's Man, just... I don't, uh, get I don't know why so many of these, they're up there. They're so weak. Um, Has a lot of, to do with the people that are doing it, Jeff. You know, what do you expect? Everybody to be an audiophile? It's like, let me yes. see if the vi Let me see if the levels are up that. Only a professional knows how to do that, Jeff. <laughs> I mean, not anybody see. can do it. Let me show, show you how we, we professionals do things. <laughs> that worked out well. Me, 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 me. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right. Boost that sucker up. It's right, we'll about a minute long. Else. We'll move on to something else. We just got to get Let's this Let's move thing. on. <clears throat> how about the uh, cryptocurrency craze? Or... Never heard of it, Jeff. Never heard of that one? All right. Of course I have. So let's go to... So yeah, let me jump into this one then while you're looking for that. I'm just going to dive head first into this because yes. you brought it up. Markets face immediate and acute risk due to crypto. Guess who said that, Chip? An IMF official. Why not? Why not? It, it's it's very, a very interesting timing that the IMF has decided to come out against crypto after they bashed the president of El Salvador, after... And we've heard some rumblings of this uh, couple of bills floating around in the U.S., including a potential executive order. Um, but here in this case, the IMF doubled down on El Salvador and took it a step further. And what they're saying now is that crypto in general is bad for the markets. And oh, is that uh, what they're saying? I think it's tremendous for the markets, actually. And they didn't Whatever. just think about any markets, Chip. They talked about the emerging markets. An IMF official told the Financial Times that crypto poses risk to emerging markets. 
it's almost like whatever they say, it's just go the opposite. <laughs> it's like almost oh, any God. government official, any any official from any organization, just know that it's exactly the opposite. I think that's kind of how you it know, works. You know what the risk it poses? That the people there can get wealthy. Yeah, the, the people that's can look out for themselves. Risk. That might be that's part risky. of it, Jeff. Risky. That's high, high risk. The latest comments follow the IMF's recent plea, plea to El Salvador to drop Bitcoin as legal tender. Man, look at this. They're raising concerns. IMF Monetary Fund has chimed in on crypto. So here's the here's the guy, Tobias Adrian, a financial counselor and head of the Monetary and Capital Markets Department at the organization, uh, told the Financial Times that volatile crypto assets for global capital flows could create immediate, immediate and acute risk across the emerging markets, not just in one, but doesn't don't you can't take the uh, economies and everything that's happening in, in the individual country, but it's across all the markets, all of them. Crypto is being used to take money out of countries that are regarded as unstable. Now, what? <laughs> now I look at that chip and I say, let's see, the economy's unstable. Let's uh, let's use Venezuela as an example. Even though Venezuela is no an emer no longer an emerging market, it's kind of like a a reverse developed market. They used to be developed, used to have a lot of resources, and now it's the exact opposite. You know, it happened in a short period of time. But they're looking for a means to protect, you know, what they used to have. And then you have other countries that are looking also to protect what they have what they want to have because they've never actually had it because of the suppression from their individual countries. What do you think, Chib? Is this guy at the IMF, are they on to something or are they on something? <sighs> It's exactly the opposite, Jeff. Whatever they say is exactly the opposite. I mean, what I love about Bukele down the uh, the president of El Salvador is he gives zero, you know what? Fs. Fs. Zero. He, he, he doesn't care. He even goofs about it. doesn't care. Because if he goes with the IMF, he's going to beg and plead, oh, please, can you disperse some money into my country so they can keep them little, small, don't let the people thrive and grow. But by going after the whole Bitcoin thing, okay, granted, it's taken a pretty big hit on the chin, but so what? That's why people buy the dip. But ultimately, if it rises 3% tomorrow, well, that's 3% more than, than any, any bank note you would have as legal tender in El Salvador. So it's a pretty yeah. simple, it's a pretty simple uh, uh, explanation there, Jeff. But okay, yeah. so we have the clip here. Got it. Boost, I had, I had right. a boost it twice here. Nice. I want to do this. So this says Gary Gensler's SEC crypto expert. And the SEC Perfect. crypto expert is the guy, the famous mm, senator who that. wrote who, who wrote that horrible uh, America doesn't compete act. OK, just so I just throw, I draw attention to that. I think his name is Himes. Is that Himes? Himes. Yeah, John him? Himes or Hims or something like that. You so that you can give us some guidance on how you think we might most fruitfully use our time to try to address those areas in which there's likely to be um uh bad behavior uh, i thank you in two minutes and 20 seconds um i think that what we have here is a number of innovations and and with the, why, why i'm focused on the platforms the trading platforms and the lending platforms is because investors basically are giving ownership rights up they transfer what's called a private key to the platform in most of them. What? <laughs> Investors basically are giving ownership rights up. They transfer what's called a private key to the platform in most of them. Oh, uh, that's a lie, Gary. That's what it says on screen. That's yeah. a lie. <laughs> what? You never give exchanges but, private keys ever. First of all, ever, there's no ever. Don't be a don't Gary. Don't be a Gary. <laughs> don't be a Gary. <laughs> Don't lie to Congress. <laughs> Why does he get it so oh wrong? Oh my God. Well, I mean, well, there's not yeah, even a mechanism. See, obviously he doesn't own crypto because there's no, not even a mechanism, Jeff, to be able to transfer it. That's the best part about it. There's not even a mechanism. Oh. It's like, you know, it's like, I'm so mad. You're banging your keyboard. Ah, I'm so mad. Why are you mad? I've been trying to transfer my private keys to the exchanges all day. It's impossible. I give up. <laughs> it's a but I think maybe could he have just got that wrong? But what maybe. is his point then? If you were going to transfer yeah. from exchange to a to to a private wallet, I mean a, a cold storage wallet, 
because you, you yeah. hold your key. I don't know. I don't. I don't even understand the point he's making. I don't even think he got it. Who knows what he's talking about? I don't think he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> I, I think I'm pretty sure about that. I mean, I think that's one thing we can count <laughs> on is doesn't have a clue what he's talking about there. But yeah, here's here's what he's referencing. Like Hans loaded. In essence, he's right. Not your keys. Not your crypto. <laughs> maybe maybe that's what he should have said. That's what he was trying to say. But I don't even think he knows that, though, Jeff. That's the whole weird thing about it. So, so let's talk about this. So Julian Lennon, who, uh, who is John Lennon's uh, first son, of course, you know Sean Lennon too. But the, he's he's uh, he's the son with Joko Ono, and uh, so Julian Lennon, he's he has some paraphernalia. He has some, you know, some rarities, I guess you would say, and some he NFTs. wants to. Some NFT. Well, he's turning him into NFTs, but he has real. Here's where we're gonna take a look at him. You see, I had to reshow this whole thing, but he has. Let's put this up here. Let's look at this. Yeah. So unique Beatles and John Lennon items from Julian Lennon's collection up for NFT auction, exclusive right there. So that's um, Lennon's code from the Magical Mystery Tour film. His cape from mm -hmm. Help, three guitars, and a Paul McCartney handwritten arrangement notes for Hey Jude all from son john's julian private collection going up for nft auction february 7th the first in a series to be rolled out in the coming months the lending connection cool. nft collection presented by nft marketplace yellow heart that's kind of weird have you heard of yellow heart that's one of the exchanges i've not heard of have you heard of that never heard of it no weird right <laughs> never there you go heard never, never heard of it either but and now everybody in the world has heard of it well uh, thank you to the eight people watching that have heard of it. <laughs> thank you, ten people watching. How many? How many people are uh, bidding on it? Well, look at that, Les Claypool uh, pulsating poetry paintings. So is this like an artist collective here? Maroon Five. That must be, be all. It must be all artists. The odd little what is it place. Called? Yellow Jacket. It's called Yeah Y H dot I O. Yellow Heart, I believe it is. Oh, Yellow Heart. So check this out. This is all like Chris Bodie. Look at this, Daniel Donato. So it must all be like artists and maybe um I know I know a port whoa mm. psycho Barbie looks a little crazy. What in the world is going on over there? That's a little like nutso. And then a lot of Jerry Garcia art there from the Grateful Dead and then Zoo of NFT. Yeah, so it looks like an artist collective or something along that. XXX Tension. It's all like from, uh, from Pompano art, Beach, art Florida, in, uh, Jeff. Art and uh, musicians. It was taken out way too, way too soon um let's see kings of leon yeah it looks like there's a whole peggy's pretty... asking if that's in open sea um but i don't i don't think that was open sea that's no this is uh this is yellow heart i'll throw i'll throw the uh, link down there in the is everything chat there room. in uh ethereum what is it on good question not sure what to do first click the click connect wallet button to get started let's see what this is connect wallet so let's see what this is Get Yellow Heart. Yellow Meta Heart's Meta. the name of the exchange. Oh, yeah, so it's MetaMask. Oh, you can do Coinbase too. It supports crypto payments, so you can send so it all, through. Yeah, mostly ERC twenty. So got you it. can do credit card and crypto. You can do your MetaMask. So I like the fact that it's got multiple, not just like MetaMask. So there's all the little things you can yeah. do. Robert's asking if you can find Hunter Biden's uh, art. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> that's not NFTs. That's that NFT collection's coming next. I think that's the next thing. But anyway, <laughs> let's not get off on a tangent here. Let's 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 That'll talk be a about great this. One. I'd like so, to see uh, Hunter Biden's uh, China portfolio as an NFT. There you go. That would be fun, right? All right. That would be yeah. great. All right. Good. So what else we got here? So this whole Beatles thing, it, it, it's kind of exciting, Chip. I mean, well, I know is. you like the Beatles, but ah, you know, most Beatles. people most people know who the Beatles are. I would say the I would majority think so, of but people. Look at, uh, so what's interesting is that this was the launch party that he wore. Okay, it can't be played great. Hmm. What is going on? Look at that. Let me, let me redo it again here. So it's, it's the Afghan coat right here. Now you're going to have to turn down the sound because no, there's no sound on it. It's just, it's just the jacket revolving. That's all it is. Is that the that's, NFT? That's the NFT. Now he's actually keeping. Is it in vertical? The, he's keeping the physical works, you know, the, the, the gear it's because obviously he wants to pass it down. There's a 1958, I believe, Gibson guitar. Oh, when you when you go up and you look at that, is that how the NFT actually looks? It's going to be kind of recorded vertically like that? I believe that is what it looks like. So there's the black cape right there. This is going to be what the NFT is going to look like. That's a 19, what is that? 1958. 
So Les Paul. You know, I, you know what I'm going to be excited about NFTs like this when they make them into holograms. It's just even cool the way they took it and presented sweet. it. Here it is, the 1959 Gibson. I used to have a uh, a 69 Gibson grabber. Nice. Face. It was all gray, Jeff. I painted it gray. And, um, yeah, so then what I wanted to show you, um, something even really cool was this piece right here. And hopefully, hopefully it'll be okay. But because it's a tweet, it's public domain, right, Jeff? Mm. Hmm. Yep. Right. Let's see. Let's see the thing about this. that, it is public domain. Uh, if it's on minute. Twitter, it's good to go. How come we don't have any sound here? What do you got? Uh, I'm trying to play this. Oh, you know what? Man. Here it is. It must be right here. Here it is. Okay. I'm going to have to reshare the screen because I want to play this audio here. Now, this is kind of an odd. This is really odd. Like, if you're a real deep Beatles fan, you know that obviously Hey Jude was written by Paul McCartney, but mm -hmm. Julian Lennon has the, the handwritten notes, and there's some other things that he'll get into here, which I, which I thought was odd. I thought he'd have more of a... But let's let's take a look at this. Let's look at this. Here we go. And I'll play this full screen. This is Hey Jude Notes uh, from the Lennon Collection, the NFT collection right here. We'll throw it up there. This little audio that accompanies it. Arrangement notes. I was just five years old when my parents divorced. Shortly thereafter, Uncle Paul, McCartney that is, wanting to comfort me in the wake of this news, began singing Hey Jules on a drive out to visit Mum and I. That spark of inspiration soon developed into the Beatles song, Hey Jude. Adorned with his random doodles and drawings, the document offers a rare glimpse into the mind of one of the greatest songwriters of our time, as he created a song that will live on for generations to come. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Nice. And that's, is that part of the NFT? That's that's the, the NFT the, right uh, there with the audio. Yeah, I believe that's part of the audio in there. So that's going to be kind of a cool thing. Obviously, he's going to keep the handwritten notes. Hmm. I mean, but, but it's just cool to see a new sort of a presentation, a new take on it. Yeah. A take, yeah, it's really really cool stuff. Interesting to see how Very, that works. So that's going to be cool. how much are they? How much are those NFTs? Well, it's going to be an auction, Jeff. So who knows what it could actually fetch? What do you think? It's I know that. At? Uh, I don't know if they're. I don't know if they have a starting price on it though. They should start them off low. They should start off at like uh, one ETH. Oh, Even better. Let's uh, it do it on uh, do it on the XRP ledger. Start off at one XRP. That'd be pretty sweet. It doesn't say exactly. I don't know what they're going to start it at. But an auction, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be the bid's going to drive the auction. So we'll have to see what that ends up being. Hard to say, Jeff. Really hard to say. Very what it might be Very exciting indeed indeed and then in other news here you know the wrath of common is always like sleuthing on the on the on the ripple partnerships thought this was a very cool one right oh, here fine. he came up with a good one it's a good one i don't know where he i don't know where he comes up with this stuff but he's like all over it man so this oh, is one of the go. uh jimmy the meek is saying they start at five thousand dollars there you go so there you go I'm out. <laughs> uh, there you go. So tracking Ripple user um, Omnis expanding into Europe after receiving a banking license. Initial expansion mm -hmm. will be central in Eastern Europe, rolling out business activities in Germany, Austria, Italy, Czech Republic, and Poland before the end of the year. And here is this article here. It talked about the Swiss fintech Omnis expands to Europe as it receives payment um institution license and i think it says something in there about ripple I'm pretty, pretty sure cool is that are they using ripple net it's a ripple partner what was uh they're just a ripple partner with yeah they're just a ripple partner sweet oh that's so. great you know we can we we're continuously seeing the expansion uh within uh within the space we're starting to see those changes we're still seeing a little bit of resistance and pushback from entities like the imf or some of the central banks or the fed uh or you know some of the uh politicians you know they're really concerned about their uh their ongoing slush funds 
Um, but here's the here's the art one I was looking for, which Ripple's latest update on this. This is from March second uh, of twenty twenty. Partners with Ripple to develop an ecosystem. There we go. And you can kind of see that ecosystem starting to pay dividends, central and eastern Europe, and rolling out basically all over the place. So it's kind of an interesting thing. That's great. They got their banking license. You yeah, know, that's, so that's huge. Collaborates with Ripple. And what what's the objective there? Ease of payment transactions for SMEs. And that's and that's great as we look around Europe, you know, it's still, even though they have some of their uh their payment solutions over there, but they're it's still, you know, problematic. Uh the small, small to medium size enterprise over there and anywhere in the world still need to move money. Yeah. You know, and you don't and you're not gonna rely on the banking infrastructure to do it, even if you have uh what what is theirs called? I forget. Over in Europe, they have a, a payment uh, solution over there that's using fiat and kind of fast settlement. Yeah, I don't remember know what, what it's it called. I don't remember what it's called. No, but I don't know if it's really geared up for businesses as much as individuals. So, you know, this is this is an amazing step forward, and we're really starting to see Ripple's solution and you know some everywhere, of the companies Jeff. they're working with moving beyond just banks. It's everywhere. It's just incredible. Everywhere we so, look. Yeah, it's a story from 2020, but. Again, you know, you're starting to see some some new stuff, and that was uh, just kind of seeing what they're doing and how they're expanding, and now they've got that banking license, and they're off to the races. I like it. I like oh, it. Oh wait, the bid so, starts at 30k on this one, Jeff. I just saw this one. Thirty thousand. Oh, okay. As in, uh, hmm. thirty thousand okay. USD. Okay then. That's what the bid starts I, at. I won't be bidding on it today. Or it looks like 11 ETH. Is that what that is? That's what I'm guessing that is. Mm. Makes sense. It says handwritten notes. Now, now I think it would be a bigger deal if you actually got the, the handwritten note along with the NFT. Because the NFT would say that it was the ownership. That would be your... But again, it's just or if creating an NFT. The note, that'll be the last... I'm telling you, Jeff, that's what I'm it. doing. I'm going to... So if he can do that, I'm going to go ahead and create... I'm going to create NFTs for my handwritten uh, autographed... Uh, be, my um my Luke Skywalker cards. Why can't I, Jeff? They're mine. Why not? But yeah, I might just give it. them. I might just give them away. You know what I'm saying? You know, I might just uh, give them away. There it is, right there. See? There you go. Sweet. So you know, Mark. Let's say, let's say Mark chips. Camel. Uh, basically, he uh, autographed a bunch of them for me. Say two chip with love, Mark Hamill. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, best always, Mark Hamill. This one says best always, Mark Hamill. This one mm -hmm. says no. I'm not gonna read that one. May your aim be true. See, he's like got the old, there it is. And then this one is CP3O is PO'd, as in pissed off. <laughs> PO'd. So, yeah. Hey, Steven, free yourself right there. Jeez. So, I don't know, Jeff. Why don't I do that? I mean, is, uh, is that going to be a, is that a trademark issue? Uh, quite honestly. Oh, he, no, you can sell it. Who said you can't sell it? He doesn't own the rights to it. I'll sell it as an NFT and you get the actual well, card you, with you it. you own it, though. Yeah, you own it. Yeah, you own I own that it. card. So I own the card, and I you, you got to turn it into an NFT. Turn it into an NFT, collect. but you actually get the card with it, Jeff. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, there you go. You get the card. And the NFT proves ownership of the card now. There you go. Bam. Instead of having to use one of those uh, authentication uh, uh, companies, yeah, you know, you typically you get your collectible card. You got to send it off, and they rate it, and they do all that. Send it back in a little plastic case, and then, you know, how do you know you own it? Or how does anyone else know you actually own that item that's been authenticated or if it was a fake? And that's definitely, you know, it's always a, a big issue. You know what so, I'm going to sell it for? One, one. million. <laughs> one there you million go, XRP. XRP. <laughs> that's what I'll be. Hey, let me, well, while we're on to the uh, good stuff here. So John Deaton threw out this uh, tweet uh, yesterday. And it's it's interesting because it was just kind of a retweet basically saying, check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out. With a check little finger pointing down. So so we check it out here. Blockworks was saying assets under management. All right. So these are some of the bigger financial institutions like BlackRock, $10 trillion asset under management, Fidelity 8, Charles Schwab 7.5. BNY Mellon for a uh, 2.4 trillion. And what's interesting about it is this collection of articles, you know, of what's been going on here. Fidelity plans US ETFs 
tied to metaverse crypto industry. Notice their ETFs. BlackRock plans a blockchain and tech ETF amid hmm. crypto meltdown. All right. So uh, BNY Mellon sees potential for digital asset revenue in 2023. So right around the corner. Charles Schwab is considering filing for crypto spot ETF. What's right. going on right now in the moment that all of the big guys are coming out and saying, we see an opportunity. And the market is artificially low right now. Anybody noticing that? Hmm. Interesting, right? Big right. guys oh, yeah. getting in, market low. Sounds like something special there. Well, so let's see. Let's see some of the comments here. Fidelity's was already not approved. If BlackRock doesn't get one approved, I'm not sure how anyone will. So that's well, don't worry. right now. Don't worry. Wall Street talk. buddies get stuff approved. That's how it works, Jeff. Haven't exactly. you been paying attention? That's exactly. how it works. Now, what, what do you Street... think this is all about? <laughs> um, I have a good feeling. It's hard to, it's hard to say, though. Right, let me see if I can open it. Let me do this while you're doing that. So Jerry Brito, he's of the think tank, known as Coin Center. He put this tweet out. He said, I'm happy to report that Jim Himes, we just played him, Jeff, has listened to our voices. And it looks like the notice and comment protections in the Competes Act related to a special measures that will be retained. This is in a manager's amendment that will be considered later this week. And then Jim Hines came and said, hey, Thanks for working with us on this, Jerry Brittle. Good, good outcome. Now, Jeff, you're going to have to enlighten me of what the outcome of this actually was, because uh, I, it's quite a big bill, and there, the notice and comment protections in the Competes Act related to mean? special measures will be retained. Okay. I don't even know what that means. I'll be honest with you. So let's see. <laughs> Apparently, it's somewhat of a good. I, I mean, you have to pull it up because we have to look at what. Okay. What the so notice what, comment? What what page is it on? Fourteen eighty five. Yeah, fourteen eighty five. Strike lines five through eighteen, and insert the following. So okay, we'd have to go on. through those lines. Fourteen eighty five. Eighty five. Well, I want to let me type over here. It's my and then uh, lines five through eighteen, and they can be repeated with this. Let me type. So the numbers. basically, it's page fourteen eighty five, line twenty. Insert for or before on. I don't know. It doesn't sound like a big triumph to me because there's still a lot of unchecked things going on inside that bill. So this is just seems to be minute. I guess it's progress though, Jeff. I guess a little bit of progress is good, better than nothing, is what they say. So you got you find anything on that puppy? Have you scrolled down to 1485 yet? Let me take you out of here. It looks like you that was planned. What happened, <laughs> Jeff? You I don't I was trying to get to the uh I was like talking the, to you and you're like really in deep Compete thought. Act. I was going to the America's Compete Act and all of a sudden it said it shut my browser. Weird. I thought you were just Very deep weird. in thought. No. And I'm trying to trying to to uh, type 1485 in the thing. It won't let me actually type. Oh, that's weird. This. I don't think it matters, Very Jeff. Nice. We got so much to cover tonight. This is just one one of the millions of things we got I'm going on, on here. Two. Number lock off. I don't think it matters, off. Jeff. It's, it doesn't really matter. I think it matters. All right, let's scroll down. Does it matter, Jeff? I don't think it so. Does. It matters. It matters. You want to get to it, Jeff? I think not, he does. Not really. I'm going to get to it. Here we go. 1485. Prohibitions or conditions on certain Wait, transmittal. Lines panels. 5 through 18. Line five, okay, one, in subsection A, A in paragraph one, by inserting after Secretary of Treasury of the Treasury may the following by order regulation or otherwise as permitted by law, by striking what? I don't know. This is not so important. It's, it's not because I'm looking at this. I'm like, this is all gobbledygook. Read. <laughs> it doesn't seem like a big win well, to me. That's all I'm saying. The it whole thing like is extremely difficult to understand and read by striking paragraph two and inserting the following. Former requirement, the special measure described in subsection B may be imposed in such sequence or combination as the secretary shall determine. Okay. That's uh, I don't know what a lot you're of, talking about, Jeff. It's a lot of not so exciting stuff. 
when they really could have addressed a lot of other elements, like some of the elements that I covered in terms of uh, uh, some of the remittance payments and how they were looking at crypto and you know some of the negative language they were using on page 894, I think it was. I know I can't, my numbers, it won't accept my numbers. So that's how they do it. So check this out, Jeff. This was on the Clayman countdown today. Oh, yes. This is good. And let's listen to this. This is going to be interesting to like listen to because the, you have Perry Ann, who is basically weighing in on this whole Biden executive order and what some, I guess, ideas about what that might look like. Here we go. Bitcoin is on track to end January with its... Uh, just don't you love it, Jeff? No, just, just love when it, just love when a plan comes together, aren't you? <laughs> what? <laughs> what in the world? And then it's just I thinking. I'm playing it again here. So I was just playing it. That's the weird part about it. But I don't know. Play, play it again, Sam. But you know, it's their own built-in player. It's like, hang on, let me try to do this one more time. Let me see if I can get this going here. Oh, here it is. Bitcoin. As soon as I add it there, it doesn't do anything. That's the weirdest part. Now, let me see if I can open it. I got to watch the ad first. It's a real yeah. exciting ad. Jeff, we didn't. Well, we already watched the ad. Well, I'm watching it. it again. They say it's on Blu-ray. Does anybody have Blu-ray anymore? Why are they releasing Blu-ray disc? I didn't even know there were Blu-rays still out there. There are. Do you have a DVD player? My son-in-law has a DVD player. He has Blu-ray. Matter mm. of fact, that was part of his Christmas gift, Jeff. Ah, oh, sweet. So, you know. You know what's cool? You remember? You remember the laser disc back in the day? Nope. Big huge time. You don't remember those big laser discs? Nah. How was that before oh, your time? I wasn't even born yet, Jeff. <laughs> Come on, man. We knew weren't born yet. The laser disc. I never heard. <laughs> like of the eighties. No one ever heard. Maybe seventies, late seventies, before For who before remembers VHS. Before the all right, never mind. Can you play it, Jeff? I don't know. Let's find out. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Bitcoin is on track to end Turned up. with its worst performance in four Left years, side. down more than 20% since the start of 2022, leading many investors to fear that we might be at the precipice of the so called crypto winter, the prolonged period of. Just watching the, these currencies do nothing. All right. Could help be on the way, though, from an unlikely source. The Biden administration is said to be preparing no. the release of an executive order on cryptocurrency this February, which we all know is tomorrow, right, that will offer government-wide strategies for digital assets. And while there are still many unknowns surrounding this order, Harry Ann Boring, founder and president of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, is here to anticipate what the directive might include. And Perry Ann, you are a crypto expert, but I want our viewers to know that you also worked mm. as a legislative analyst in the House of Representatives. With that background, what do you think? What can you guess this executive order is going to look like? What do you think? I, you know, everybody's being very positive on this. And I think it's a good strategy before anything's done. Like, I think it's going to be the greatest thing ever. Better than sliced bread? Hell yeah, 10 times better than sliced bread. Sliced bread was just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I like from the most likely. Okay, there we go. Yeah, let's listen. Here we go. Here we go. Cryptocurrency craze. Christ, I like that. Jeff. At the precipice of the crypto winter. Ooh. I like how she started that off. She didn't seem very happy about doing this, this segment. All right, here we go. Well, what's been reported in the media so far is that it's going to outline a government-wide strategy for blockchain. And what we're expecting to see is a broad-based set of recommendations that are focused on coordinating various government agencies to set a policy framework for this technology. Now, just to give you a little bit more context, at the Chamber of Digital Commerce, we have been advocating for a national action plan for blockchain for three years in February. So this whole of government approach, it's long overdue, but it's really important that we get the details right. So what we're calling for is we're asking the administration to send a clear statement of support for the development of this technology 
in the United States. And there's so much on the line here for us to maintain, for the U.S. to maintain its preeminence in the sector. What we need is a light touch policy framework that does no harm, but also provides regulatory clarity <laughs> to investors in the industry. We have a lot to lose if we get this wrong and if this innovation is pushed overseas. So the devil is in the detail, but this this could be a positive development for the industry. Could be, Jeff. But, right. unlikely, but unlikely, right? What's weird is she worked in the House of Representatives and she says that Biden is going to release something that's going to dictate the framework of government agencies. The government agencies have nothing to do with it. It's Congress. Why is everybody trying to reinvent the wheel? This is simple. Congress makes oh. Congress makes the laws. It gets signed by the president. It they, they, they starts as a bill. It goes through a house. It's voted on by the Senate. And then the president signs it into law and an executive order. She's, is he going to magically say to uh, the SEC or to CFTC or and say, you're going to now come up with the framework? Is this going to have another meeting to talk about a meeting to then talk about crypto stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I had to put that up. <laughs> uh, DA high video clip volume level. Yeah, unfortunately, this was off uh, Fox's <laughs> website. So yeah. it's not, you Hans can't believe it. She's reading a script. I think she's reading reading a script also. And it's, you know, her voice is just it was just a little bit, you know, a little bit irritating. Yeah, I've seen her in other things. She's been pretty good, but it's it's you know, look at doing these like live shots, pretty but, hard. It's like you no, go, know, you gotta you gotta difficult. you know, you have to go at the time and she's trying to get it right. She doesn't want to misspeak, but like, she's tr doing her best to be anticipate something positive happening. But yeah, just no, judging over to how the last year has gone, Jeff, I'm not expecting a lot. <laughs> I'll be honest with yeah, you. Nothing's no, been clear. Man, it's backwards. Everything <laughs> It's, it's, it's going to be opposite. If she's expecting something good is going to come out of it, then we got to go the other way because this is something if, if this administration is going to do is going to do anything to and, and she wants to anticipate something with the, the federal agencies. It's going to be the opposite of expectation. So maybe if we're expecting something bad and they're trying to do something good, maybe it'll be bad for them, but good for us. Well, also, too, if. I saw that Darren Soto, congressional representative from the great state of Florida, was up there and we heard he was talking about, but but what we're hearing is not that. We're hearing names like Elizabeth Warren and other names being floated, which th these are the people that have been outspoken and really against the cryptocurrency, you know, and, and period. Because you know why, Jeff? It's the Wild West. I mean, if they wore that <laughs> phrase out, it's the Wild West. I mean, west. nobody used the Wild West since the Wild West. I mean, nobody even uses that <laughs> phrase anymore. You know, it's the Wild West. Yeah. You know who does? Mr. Enforcer. It's the shoot him up. You know, you go into a saloon, you throw <laughs> on your bottle, they fill it up, and you toss it back, Jeff. And then you start shooting people. The good old days. The good old days. That's when. Good old that's... days. Alex, Alex blog says uh, F at XRP to the moon. It's the moon. <laughs> Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Moon bound. You know, and people have been saying yeah. on crypto Twitter, Jeff, a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, it's, uh, someone left a comment the other day. Yeah, it's going to go to $100 or 26 cents <laughs> to the moon. One or two could happen and both of them can happen. So there, it's always a possibility. Or they happen simultaneously. Silverback Gorilla is saying expect a big dip, not just any dip. But a big one. As big, in the big huge. dipper, Jeff. Yep. And then uh, there were some rumors that uh, Trudeau is uh, is hiding out in the U.S. somewhere. Yeah, I saw a great video it's earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The classics. Yeah, he came out to talk and, man, he just got, man, didn't go over really well. So look, Ripple put a tweet out. You know, Jeff, you might have to remind me. I don't remember Ripple putting out one of these poll sort of questions. So this is like a new, a new thing for Ripple on their official Twitter account. But they put this out. I want to see. Let's see what people go in here, and we'll vote because I haven't voted in this thing yet. But let's see what the, the majority of people want to go with. Here it All says right. there's a lot in store for crypto in 2022. Mm -hmm. Ripple's leaderships, uh, Ripple leadership share their top predictions for the new year in a recent blog. 
which of the following trends are you most excited about it? Number one, NFTs are going mainstream. Two, a multi-chain future. Three, clarified regulation. <laughs> and then four, more crypto payments. So if you had to choose one, let's hear what you hear from the uh, the crowd here. From we, the, let's hear from the crowd, again. and then we'll pick one. And OTC and fam, we'll, what do you say, OTC we'll fam? Let Put in us, there what you guys think. Yeah, Trudeau's hanging out with uh, Gary in his living room. So when we uh, tune into uh, Daddy G on his next video, he'll be hanging out with uh, Trudeau, uh, maybe a few others. Imagine you're that weak that you have to go to the U.S. to hide out. And why are you hiding out? Uh, yeah, I don't. This is your. Part. This is this is his <laughs> creation. He created it, so he owns it. Got to live with it. I love how about, those politicians uh, are always like, we have Newsom. to do this and fight for this and fight for that. You're the guy. You're the one making the rules. You're the one with the say. So what do we have here? Anybody Anybody care rolling here? No, we've got number three, clarified regulation. Got three votes on that so far. One vote on an NFT. Everyone will start uh, popping some things in there eventually. Got some more clarity. Crypto G, more, another clarity. Another clarity. I think we got a lot of clarities coming in here. Oh, let's and, go, Brenda. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's go, Brenda. <laughs> D. Haviland saying, why did they leave out utility? I mean, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, more utility. You know, that would that would be a, another good uh, number five in there. Yeah, utility. it's like more cowbell, Jeff, on the Saturday got night. No, it tons needs more and cowbell. Tons of clarified regulation. So needs more I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with clarified regulations as well, Chip. What are you going to go with? Well, NFTs really kind of already are mainstream because I saw that another one of these other, somebody else bought a board ape. I mean, everyone's buying the board apes. So you can play in the clips. It's already kind of gone mainstream. I think we'll eliminate that one. More crypto payments. Yeah, that could be a contender, but that really is kind of the utility portion of it. I would, I think us all, all of us here would like clarified regulation. I'm just not. I'm excited about it, but I'm just a little doubtful that's going to happen. Obviously, it's going to be a multi-chain future, but are we going to go with clarified regulation, Jeff? Say so we go with clarified regulation. That's going to be the majority. Let's do it. Let's see what. Let's see how that comes out. And bam, there it is. That, that was the one. Fifty-six percent are followed people. by NFTs going mainstream at fifteen point three percent. Then at 14.6% wow. a multi-chain future. And then eh, nobody's that excited. 13.5%, which is more crypto payments. Look at we that. We don't want 50. more of that. <laughs> because people already know about that. They don't really That's care right. so much about that. It's like, oh, look, more crypto payments. So yeah. The clarified yeah. regulation is there. We know. Here we go. Rob XRP. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, he put in the same order that. Yeah, worked. clarified multi chain. Well, he put he flip flopped those, but basically got it almost spot on. Crypto oh, Wolf. NFTs was yeah second. Everybody's mostly excited about Ripple flipping the switch for XRP. <laughs> That's yes, true, true. Very good point, Crypto Wolf. Yes, old and crypto is like flip the flip switch, it. baby. <laughs> flip the switch. Like you know, <laughs> you gotta love these guys. You gotta love them. Multi-chain XRPL growth, and of course, regulations. But in, internationally, multi-chain ecosystem growth is exciting. Calculated risk says the trend we are most excited about isn't listed. Understandably so. Positive outcome. Calculated <laughs> risk knows what he's talking about. 100% says Sean Michael. And then... Uh, these little piggies went wee, 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 all the way to the top of the SEC. All the way. <laughs> all the way to the SEC. Yeah, that's so, Chip, so yeah, yesterday, smile. yesterday, um, DNI, Digital Nomad Investor, and um, I forget the, the other guy's name. What's it? Was on Crypto Eddie um, with uh, someone else. They, they have a, an NFT project with elephants. Um, there's a chance that we're going to have that set up for them to come on with us tomorrow night and talk right. about the uh, NFT project. And I'm um, not sure when this is going to happen, um, but Blockchain Backer did reach out about coming on the show. Yes. Boom. Blockchain so Backer, cool one, of, one, of the, one of the greatest tech 
you know, TA guys out there without a doubt, man. It's, it's fantastic. That's it. That'll be, that'll be awesome. So uh, we got, we got some good stuff that's going to be coming up here in the very near future. Um, but Chip, I want to <laughs> go ahead. What do you got? What do you got there? I was, I was oh. just laugh. I want, I want to pull this up. Oh, it's, the same one I was pulling up. Oh, same one I pulled up. <laughs> We're both laughing <laughs> about the same thing. <laughs> that's that's funny. Perfect. Let's pull it up too. So for, what I find is interesting about this is, you know, I get into this one. Um, now what happened to Matt Hamilton's thing? There it is. Is that it? You've I think been so. Yeah. So it all started with Pushkar. So Pushkar came out and said, well, let me back up. Isn't it? Is, now, no, hang on a second. Is that Pushkar no, it started with or Push? Yaga. Why is it Pushkar? It's push, push, push car. It's push car. <laughs> push car. What's with push oh, yeah. car? Push, 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 push car. <laughs> push car. <laughs> oh, this one is from push car. Why is it push? It says push car. It started off with Sadaf Jadron. Stop the violence against XRP holders. That's how this all started off. All right. And then, so push, <laughs> push car. <laughs> push car. Sure, he loves that. <laughs> push car. Uh, said it's because XRP is not really considered a part of the cryptoverse, centralized and does not run on traditional blockchain. Plus, it works with banks and cryptocurrencies were invented because people were fed up with the banks. Now, it's funny because it's crypto editor under slash WR, um, but also um, crypto veteran, six followers on Twitter, um, also <laughs> not financial advice, just, uh, you know, whatever. It's cool. You know, I'm glad to see someone that's engaged and, and starting to uh, expand a little bit in the Twitter space. It doesn't matter if you have no followers or a, or a, a thousand, 10,000, whatever, engaged. And people are commenting, which is awesome. And I'm looking at this and not only were there just, you know, they, all of a sudden, you know, here's Matt Hamilton pops up and, and, he, and he responds, which is awesome. Uh, and I thought this was a great response. Uh, you've been misled. The XRP ledger is a decentralized, permissionless blockchain. It was invented because people were fed up with the with banks. And here he's saying, plus it works with banks and cryptocurrencies were invented because people were fed up with the banks. And here it's invent. So it's it's really I you know I I'm glad that we saw some uh, some good responses here and and more. You know, it just kept going exactly. Plus people talk. Like Bitcoin is going to replace the banks or something. Let me burst some bubbles. Banks are never going away. Ripple and anyone with common sense knows this. So Ripple is trying to fix the problem. Banks and the rest of the world has bridging. Look at this. Oh, instantly and affordable. Something Bitcoin can never do. Then you might be reply replying to a bot. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> That's the best. But there was this one too, Jeff. Look at this one right here. He says, uh, <laughs> would, this is the, sounds pretty true. Andrew um, Anastasu says, would you mind giving me or us three to four use cases for the XRPL? I'm not too tech savvy, but I'm a finance guy. I really want to look at using the XRPL for some of our projects as it is decentralized and permissionless. permissionless. And then Ticket to the Moon says Coil is a great example that could solve pay paywalls and subscriptions of all types on lines. So there is a lot of utility, and that's one of the things we look forward to in the in this whole suit with the uh, SEC. That man, how are they going to undo the utility? How are they going to pretend like there's no utility and it was all just securities on the secondary market, Jeff? It's nice. It's so funny, it. right? Yeah, it's so yes. funny, Jeff. Yes. Hilarious. Hilarious, Jeff. What Hilarious. else we got? Banks migrated to the XRPL due to transparency, and anyone can audit the ledger real time. They yeah, can't. There you go. They can't audit the ledger real time. They can't, correct. Well, if you could audit it, that'd be uh edit or audit. I don't know. I'm just reading. Reading along. XRP there, Jeff. panic. I'm very curious to see who the SEC called as their expert witness. I say it's uh, probably Craig Wright. <laughs> probably. Satoshi himself. 
And then Jeff, no. this this article really this headline shocked me. I was absolutely shocked by this. And what are you gonna do? I mean, so let me put this up here. So this is uh this was from Politico, which uh usually pretty friendly towards the other side of the aisle. So it says in 2021, the SEC went after crypto. In 2022, crypto is coming for the SEC. I love that. And uh, here's the article, the SEC crypto crusade at risk in looming legal battles. Cryptocurrency payments firm Ripple has started to rack up procedural court victories as it fends off the SEC in a case that could redefine how the agency polices digital assets. Hmm. And look at that, oh, Jeff. Full the man, the man behind the plan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tickle, 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 tickle. <laughs> so in serious. Yeah. So, uh, but this right here was a great. This was a great line. It's one of the reasons I loved it. It's like 2021. Actually, 2020, the SEC went after crypto. 2022, crypto is coming for the SEC, and that might be the like, more appropriate way to phrase it. Um, Gensler vowed to rein in what he dubbed here again mm, the Wild, the Wild West. West. Abuses in a 1.6 wow. trillion market. I mean, this has been as high as three trillion. Industry leaders flush with cash and deep pocketed investors following a trading boom in Bitcoin. Other digital assets are aiming their lawyers at the sheriff of Wall Street. Sheriff of Wall the Street. Sheriff. Oh gosh, and that's all. That's all he needs to is like it's probably walks around with a cowboy hat and. You know, he's always pulling Could his you, down. Hey, partner. Could you imagine that? You see, Gary. <laughs> Gary walking Gary around Gensler's his house. probably walking around chaps. His no jammies. Fans. He's probably got his uh, pink cow, his uh, cowboy boots on with the. Uh, oh, jeez. The uh, what's that called on the back of the cowboy boots? You know, like this crypto uh, currency payments firm Ripple, the de facto leader of the revolt has started to rack up procedural court victories as it fends off the SEC. Could redefine. Okay, we already read that. Investments which want to launch a Bitcoin fund for the masses tap the white shoe law firm, Davis Polk, publicly outline a legal case that could be brought against the agency <laughs> if it obstructs that the company's go. ambitions. Oh. Yeah, the CEO of Terra. Another number of spurs, and we got a lot of spurs in here. Spurs. Spurs. That well, jingle, everyone knew what I was talking about. Put them on the back of your cowboy boots. <laughs> with the That's pink cowboy boots. The emerging people. legal assault began cheering on by crypto friendly lawmakers. On. Hello, Jackie. Um, as a lawyer, you're kind of trained and taught to not pick fights. And this is what Stuart Alderaldi said, but they we didn't pick a fight. They picked a fight with us. And now we are going to throw punch them in a submission. No, he didn't say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be awesome. I can see Stu lines. just like losing it one time. <laughs> He's always like, and then the SEC picked a fight with us, and then we retaliated. But I just went, bam, bam, and another one, and boom. I could just see him going to town. It's a, it's a, it was a good article. Look at this right here. There's yeah, a there carrot and stick approach that Kristen Smith, who leads the Washington-based Blockchain Association, which has been apparently all silent on everything. It's aggressive, more aggressive than perhaps other industries. Gensler, former Goldman Sachs partner who became a progressive darling because of a tough approach to regulating Wall Street, has taken a sweeping view of the SEC's role in cryptocurrency, arguing that most of the products fall under his agency's jurisdiction. There's a new hmm. sheriff in town, Jeff, named Gary That's Gensler, Mate. We need to get him a need to get him a sheriff. Say partner, coach. where village you from? I went from Mate. <laughs> I hearken, I hearken all the way from MIT. Where are you from, partner? <laughs> By the way, partner, with some good-looking pink boots with spurs. And there be fighting words. Right now, we just don't have enough investor protection in crypto, he said in an August speech. To set the tone for his approach, frankly, at this time, it's more like the Wild West. The Wild West. Uh, Again, off wild the efforts wild. of others. Wild West. Off the efforts mm -hmm. of others. Oh, the Wild West. Don't rah, worry, rah, a lot rah, of people rah, will rah, be hurt. Rah, rah. So I like worry a, a lot of people would be hurt. Yeah, he's not worried, Jeff. He's got 120 million I in the bank. I don't think he's very worried. Yeah. No, he's not worried at all. He, he still won't thinks. Be hurt. Oh, maybe. First of all, take it from a guy. I mean, are we going to take this guy serious? Because he thinks that you are transferring your private keys to exchanges and you can earn 8% in a bank account. That disqualifies <laughs> him right there. Sorry, that, Jeff. That first, uh, what, were the, what was that called? Coffee Talk with Gary Gensler? What? <laughs> He got so hammered on those things. He doesn't even do them anymore. 
What was office hours? Office hours. Office hours. Office hours. Office hours. Gary Gensler. He came out with those. How <laughs> so stupid? How many he did, did the, he do? He did like two or three of them. <laughs> he wanted to do one called Pillar of Enforcement, <laughs> but that's Pillar of Enforcement. They said, "No, you can't do that. You can't do that the Pillar of the Enforcement." <laughs> then he could have had the uh, Mister Bill. Remember that? Yeah. Remember that? Uh, that so ridiculous. Civics, Jeff. The Bill, Mister Bill. About this. Or I'm just a bill and That's I'm it. sitting on Capitol Hill. Well, then I go to remember that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a bill while I'm sitting <laughs> on the Capitol Hill. You'd be hanging out with, uh, with oh my God. Then you get uh, Towley from, uh, from South Park. Then you have this uh, unlike other SEC enforcement actions that are resolved with the settlement, Ripple fought back and the case is ongoing in federal court. Company argues that XRP is not an investment contract. And that the SEC never provided fair notice that XRP was an unregistered security, a due process violation, Jeff. So I just, I just love it. It's a really good article. And it's, um, look at Darren Sotomay. He says it's a risky plan, but it's one that's well within their rights. I don't know what he's commenting on, but. What is he commenting on? What? Oh, Grayscale, a $55 billion investment firm wants to launch, but came, oh, they want to do a, a an ETF. Is that what he's commenting on? So many I mean, times they put the, the big quote because they took it from another paragraph. It could have been. I don't know what he's saying. It's, it's, it seems I didn't see any paragraph up there. Let's go down here. Maybe they, there it is. The firm's arguments hold water for some lawmakers. Yeah. Blockchain caucus. There it is. Well, within the right. So they should have put it closer here. I don't know. Isn't that a weird word? Caucus. Caucus is weird. It sounds like uh, it sounds like glue. It's like you, hey, know, you, come up you with use that? caucus, it's <laughs> gonna set for life, right? Caucus, caucus, caucus. <laughs> That's just pathetic. Such a, such a weird word. <laughs> Super you happy come up with some of these words, Jeff. I just want to take the time right now to say hello to our one viewer watching on Twitch. Hello, one viewer watching on Twitch. Do we have anybody on Twitch? Yeah, it's just. Yeah. Mouse over the oh, yeah, mouse we over got the one viewer on Twitch. Yeah, we got one viewer on Twitch. Usually that's me on Saturday mornings, Jeff. I'm always watching on, on Twitch. Twitch. Oh, you watch yeah. on Twitch? Of course I do. I like someone's, Twitch. someone's replaced you on Twitch. Somebody has. Nice. I'm okay with that, Jeff. I'm gonna be okay with Our that. Our one sole viewer over on Twitch. Hello. Hello, Hello one viewer. Twitch. Hello to whoever's on Twitch. It's probably All a bot, Jeff. Twitch. Must be lonely over there on Twitch. Well, the yeah, thing about Twitch, Twitch gives you a lot of cool functions. Like you can like flip the, the video and you can watch in the background. You can even like turn it off and then turn the flip play button on. So it's cool stuff you can do. And, Plus you can still comment, right? Oh, you can. Yeah. The comment will show up. If you're and one viewer on Twitch, here. one viewer on Twitch, please comment so we can see your comment. Let's test that out. I'd like to test it Who's out right now. Simon on Twitch. And Jeff, do you find this interesting that... <laughs> Simon, Simon's over there. Yeah. So look at this. Boom, boomers are on YouTube. The hipsters on Twitch. <laughs> With the one, or one, yeah, or one yeah. hipster. That... <laughs> yeah, the one, the one hipster is over there. I just think it's a, it's a good platform. Turkish blockchain company opens regional crypto exchanges and globalization bid. The first stop for Bitsy's international expansion, but also it's the first for a Turkish crypto exchange is Brazil. That's quite a that's. Wait, if you had, if I said again? Jeff, what? if I said Jeff, <laughs> which which what part of the world would you expect the Turkish blockchain to expand in? Would you have chosen Brazil? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, it Probably makes not, sense. Jeff. Probably not. Geographically, it makes a lot of sense. It doesn't Turkey, make any sense geographically. Brazil. <laughs> now, with the Turkish lira like just completely <laughs> collapsing and falling apart, they're expanding, right? Because there's another obviously... country where their uh, economies. Getting ready to crash. Well, it says Bitsy's, they're looking to establish local crypto exchanges in Brazil and Spain. Now, Spain is something that would be a little bit closer to home and a bid to Spain learn crypto. Yeah, Spain yeah, makes what, a what lot of sense. Into that research. You're over in Turkey, right? And you, you have a board meeting and you say to your board, uh, board, we're thinking of expanding and we want to pick a country. Brazil! And, and, right. <laughs> and he looks at you, Chip, and he says, which country do you think we should expand to first <laughs> and why? How about this? And they go through like all the couple hundreds countries. How about this one? Nope. 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 Uh, I give up. Brazil. Ah, 
he got me. <laughs> totally got me on that one. Like, why Brazil? That doesn't really make any sense. I don't know, but I will tell you something that does make sense. And that is this right here, Jeff. Right. Here it is right here. That's there what makes is. sense right there. On the chain.io. On the chain.io chain. right there. IO. Go check Broad it out. Broadcasting live. Look at Speedboat says Jesus is still alive and making sandals in Brazil. There you go. Uh, True I think story. <laughs> That's funny. True story. I was in Brazilian women. Now the Turkish going to Brazil. My son in law is from Brazil, Jeff. I don't know if you knew that or All not. Right. Mentioned that several times in this podcast from Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. There you go. That's right. That's right. Good guy. Brazil's actually kind Good of guy. Great country. family. And I love going over there. their house and eating Brazilian food, so it's all very good. And there's a Brazilian, um, there's a Brazilian uh, food place around the corner. So I'm gradually learning how to say it. And and uh, but puji is one of my favorite things to eat over there. And of hmm. course, they have empanadas and everything. But they've got they've got like three or four. Uh, Bra- Actually, where I live, there's like a little there's a Brazilian community. So there's a lot there's a Brazilian bank, a bakery, uh, like a food place. You can go and get great food, which I love, and it's all good. It's another one, the Rio the Carnival. I like that drawing, Jeff. That is a slick looking. Look at that. That's an NFT right there, that Crypto is, Bag Boy. That, is. <laughs> that Man, is badass. Crypto Bag Boy is a good artist. I like that. Can you imagine that like badass. turning that into a whole series, Crypto Bag Boy? Come on. Hit us up on Twitter. Especially, especially if there's one of Chip and one of me or Simon. Simon and Kef. <laughs> and that's, that's pretty great. much all we have, Jeff. That's well, it, what guys. To our channel? What happened to we, our website? The website, it's gone. It's all gone. <laughs> we'll see you on the there next is. one, guys. we got to get out of here, and that's all I know. Eight days a week. Six days a week. Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Eight days a week, Beatles song, Jeff. Eight days a week. Oh, dear, yeah. so, Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every Saturday at 8 a.m., Eastern Standard Time. Go check out the other channel because we are dropping those videos. We had one drop this morning. Another one will drop tomorrow morning. And thank you to Hans Loaded uh, for producing those videos and getting them cut up so we can get them out there. So go check that out. And Chip, tomorrow is Tuesday. Another day. (laughs) It's another day. Another dollar. I was going to say Monday, but it's actually Tuesday. So yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys. Come on back here tomorrow. Same time. Same channel. You can join us on. You can join us live either on YouTube, or if you're really cool, you'll be maybe the one or two viewers on Twitch. So tomorrow night, go follow us over there. So that's all we have. You have anything, Jeff? That's it. Let's get get out out of here. See you guys. Chip and Jeff out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.